There is more to CCLCM than our mission to produce future physician investigators and the use of portfolios. We asked our graduates to describe their experience, and this is what they said. The fact that we don't have any grades or tests makes us very open to help each other. My classmates didn't view each other as competitors. We saw each other as a team. You receive written feedback just as you would as a resident in the real world. You learn about yourself and how to improve. That's extremely beneficial because life will not provide a syllabus to direct your independent learning. You need to figure out how to learn best. Faculty don't belittle you. They treat you like a future colleague and encourage you to ask questions. So, how does CCLCM build such a unique learning environment where it is safe to ask questions, where it is collaborative, where it fosters critical thinking, and encourages students to engage in reflective practice? We started with an integrated curriculum that supports our mission, a curriculum made up of three core components, basic science, research, and clinical medicine. We use instructional practices that are consistent with the work of learning theorists like Dewey, Bruner, and Vygotsky. We emphasize experiential learning, self-reflection, self-regulation, and problem-based learning. But you don't have to take it from me. Let's hear what our faculty have to say about this. One thing that we talked a lot about was having our school be one in which students participated regularly in the learning process foster in the students uh, passion and excitement for learning. We wanted to have less emphasis on lectures and more emphasis on seminar teaching. The idea that there would be a relatively smaller group of students, an instructor, and that group would discuss together the material that was hoping to be learned. I think we also wanted very much for there to be an emphasis on the important role of research. If you give the students an opportunity and the material that they need to understand, they could actually describe better than I could the countercurrent multiplier in the kidney, for example, a very complicated physiologic process. And prior to seeing this happen in PBL, I really believe that nobody could really understand that unless somebody ahead of them explained it. So the ability of the students to actually grapple with very complex ideas and teach one another and at the same time actually get it right was one of the most pleasant surprises uh, that I uh, observed. Uh, watching the students grow in their uh, understanding and ability to explain and use information in a clinically relevant way has really been great. Because we put so much of the responsibility on our students, we provide them with advisors to support their learning. So the advisors are an outstanding team. Many of them are either clerkship directors or residency directors or chairpersons of departments. Many of them are on the board of governors. I think because they're committed to excellence in what they do, they expect that from their students. We want to maintain that quality. You know, we always say begin with the end in mind. If you know what you want the end to look like, you can start working with the student to get them to what you expect. And you're always thinking, will I hire this person? Will I let them take care of my family? Can I be their patient? And if you can't say yes to those three things, you can just say forget it. So when we sit down with the student, we inquire what's the student's perception of their performance and the quality of the feedback that they've gotten. How do they discern trends in how they're doing so that they could turn it into something objective that they could say, there are these five pieces of data that are saying the same thing about me. I think I need to work on this. So when they get lost, we redirect questions so that they can start to see like we're seeing. I usually see the light bulb goes off. It doesn't happen immediately. They come in in the beginning of the summer. And so they struggle, I'd say, the first three months. And by December, they, they kind of get it down. I think that the, the biggest thing that we try to, to really let them know is that it's got to be accurate. But that's not the whole story. Students must document their achievement in nine competencies. So the promotion committee reviews students' portfolios to ensure that the students are progressing at the appropriate level. Let's hear more about how the promotion committee makes decisions about student performance. 
The MSPRC is constituted of 25 to 30 members with an average of more than 10 years experience at Cleveland Clinic, as well as representatives of all types of staff, including clinicians, basic scientists, and combined research, clinical, translational research individuals, as well as representation from many different disciplines and many different departments and institutes. There's a great deal of experience with medical students and with education in general. In addition, many program directors, course directors, and those responsible for a variety of elements of the CCLCM curriculum. The curriculum has been set up in such a way that each student receives multiple types of feedback from multiple sources in multiple venues. And this actually affords the MSPRC with an excellent opportunity to determine the progress for each competency. Well, with 10 years of experience, we feel we have the process down. It's supported by the physician advisors, and it confirms that the students have met the milestones, and we feel confident that the students are ready, and the evidence that we have is in the graduates that we've produced. As you can see, CCLCM is a distinct program within the School of Medicine at Case Western Reserve University a program developed as an integrated, systematic approach to prepare future physician investigators who have a passion for scientific inquiry, skills for critical thinking, and broad-based clinical expertise.